Good morning and welcome to the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. I'm Esther. And I'm Melanie. And today we're joined by Lucy Hall from Aviso Media and Digital Women. And we're going to be talking about creating and building a community. Welcome, Lucy. Hello. Great to see you. But first, we're going to hear from our sponsors. We know how hard it is to juggle all the things in your business, the accounts, the never ending meetings, the inbox that grows and grows. But that's why we've teamed up with Agora Pulse to give you more than five hours back a week when it comes to managing your social media marketing. No complicated Excel docs, long emails or millions of open tabs. Simply manage all your social media channels in one place. Go to agorapulse.com forward slash Monday morning marketing to get one month for free. Now all you have to do is figure out how you want to spend those spare five hours. Maybe in a community. Or building a community. Or building one, yes. So the first thing I wanted to ask you, um, amazing Lucy, is... Why did you start trying to build a community, for instance, like Digital Women? What got you started? Okay, well, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, Well, basically, it's really funny because about a year, just over two years ago, no, just under two years ago, sorry, I was, it just time seems to be merging into one at the moment, to be honest. So I went to I got invited to a Facebook community leadership circles meetup with my friend um, Dan who was the lead for London and when I went I already had like some small Facebook communities and that kind of thing that I used mainly to run challenges and stuff but when I when I went to this um, this CLC meetup it was it's actually facilitated by Facebook as well um, I met so many incredible people community leaders that were doing really inspirational things so they weren't just creating Facebook groups and using it as this kind of like sales funnel which a lot of marketers do they were creating really meaningful communities that were really helping um people you know within their communities basically or um they were working with people who shared similar interests or similar goals and that kind of thing um and most of the time they were doing it just because they were with like-minded people and they wanted to make a difference. They wanted to build a community to help people and make a difference. And I spoke to a few people that first time and literally I felt like crying um, after more or less everybody I spoke to because the passion um, they had around building their communities and the reasons behind doing it was just incredible. And the, the communities people are building um, on Facebook aren't just, you know, uh, people who love bicycles, for example, but they're people who are they're just there's thousands, there's millions and millions of communities that people are building around lots and lots of different interests and things and health reasons and things they love and things they love to do and things they want to achieve and um, places where they work and places where they live and stuff you know it's just amazing there's so many communities so I was like you know what am I doing something meaningful here is there something I can do that's going to make a difference to other people um because I just wanted because I just thought you know I I I can do this this is something I can do you know I've built up a good enough kind of like um community that's not like a closed community but around social media um and I feel like I could bring people together and help even more people and so by that I was inspired and then um and that's when I thought do you know what I'm going to set up a community that is going to help to inspire women and empower women um through digital skills and that's when I set up digital women and at the same time I was talking to Nat West about doing an event as well called digital women to help Mm. to upskill women in digital so it was exactly the right time so um so that's why I launched digital women because um so for kind of almost selfish reasons in that I wanted to do something myself to help people and build a community and bring people together but also because I was so inspired by people who were making a difference and I wanted to make a difference but also because 
I know all this stuff about social media and digital marketing and digital and it's I'm absolutely obsessed by it and I've met so many amazing people over the years women mums um you know who want to get back into the workplace women who are already really successful and there's this whole ecosystem of women uh, who some are just starting out some are really you know been doing stuff for ages but everybody always has a skill gap somewhere and together I thought if we use this as a skill sharing community together we can all bring each other up together and I just yeah so that's why well that's half the podcast done (laughs) (laughs) and that's all our questions answered (laughs) um no this is why we brought you on Lucy because of the enormous passion that you have demonstrated publicly and within the group as well myself and Esther are both members of digital women and have been um from well, the we start. both we're both founding members yeah yeah um and you know we we talk every week don't we about you know things we'd like to cover and this was actually quite early but you were impossible to get hold of yeah <laughs> <laughs> She's a very busy woman. And if you could see what we're seeing right now, there are boxes behind Lucy. Can you just explain what is going on around you, Lucy, just for those people who maybe haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet or getting to know what a little part of what you do? What is going on around you? Why are there so many boxes? Um, Because, yeah, so a few years ago, I had an idea to create a social media planner to help people to write social social media content they wanted to create down on paper rather than having to use oh, obviously we're going to use all of these online scheduling tools and that kind of thing which are amazing especially like agora polls which i also love <laughs> <laughs> But actually, it's really nice when you're in meetings or when you get inspiration to actually write down what you intend to create and schedule out. Um, so I thought having a really nice planner and diary would be a great thing to create. So a few years ago, I created that. And this year, um, there's been over 500 pre-orders and it just they just all turned up on Monday. So we've been packing like crazy to get as many out as possible. Um, yeah, 500. So we've done about 400 in the last three days. And we've got about another 100 and something to go out um, today. And mine went out before yours, Esther. It did. I, I'm still waiting for mine. But hopefully by the time this podcast airs, hopefully I'll have it. Otherwise, I'll be on Lucy's doorstep and banging down the door waiting for it. Uh, but I, yeah, I have the, uh, the planner for the last two years as well. I have uh, 2019, 2020, although that one didn't get used as much. Mm. Um But just, I mean, things happen. We can plan things and then other things happen. But that's one of the one of the things that I keep hearing from you, Lucy, is the word help. Mm. Because a lot of people that I know start Facebook groups just to big themselves up or just to get credit. Well, yes and no. I no no no. I'm gonna maybe I know the wrong people. Well, maybe, yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna knock in there because. I think it's important that as a business, you build a community for your business um, so that people feel they can approach you and speak to you. But what you've done with digital women is quite unselfish. I know you actually said you felt it was quite selfish, but I, I've got to disagree with you there as well. Here I am disagreeing with everyone. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I think it was less selfish because you wanted, you, you've actually have a specific mission. Tell us what your mission is. So the mission of the community, so I think it's really important if you're creating a community to have a mission because it's something that everyone can get behind and it means it's something that gels everybody together and makes them think, yeah, actually, I want to be part of this. I want I want to get, you know, I want to help to reach this mission or reach this goal. So our mission is to empower a million plus women through digital skills. And yeah, that might seem like a lot and it might seem crazy, but, and our community is now just almost 6,000, but it's not about how many people are in the community. It's actually about how far the reach goes of those people who are learning and then sharing their learning outside um, as well. So I, I think it's possible for us to reach that mission to just have to, you know, bring the right people into the community and, you know, get them spreading the word and, and getting other people to see. Um, do you know what? I think it's really important that women see other women that are like them, um, you know, on stages and speaking and talking about the skills they have and, um, you know, sharing their talents and that kind of thing for them to go actually, you know, 
I almost give myself permission to do it as well, you know, because I think we suffer massively from imposter syndrome and you look at all of the panels and that kind of thing, especially in digital over the years, it's just been um, middle-aged white men. And I I love middle-aged white men, don't get me wrong. <laughs> that will. <laughs> there does need to be more diversity and that's not just women, you know, that's, um, that's different lots of different types of people from all over the world um who are in digital need to be standing you know standing on stages and um and we need to be more inclusive and i just i just feel like part of this is that as well so we call things out if there's not you know if there's no women on um, panels or there's no women speaking in the lineup and that kind of thing because we know that we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of amazingly talented women who don't always put themselves forward so it's almost we have to Push push them them. Up else, you know? yeah yeah and you do have I mean you spoke there about um having an event with digital women uh with NatWest but you've mm-hmm. also had some with Aviso Media as well you've had Digital Day uh you know there's loads of other events social that you day. have run Social Day yeah was that the one I was thinking of then yeah uh, yeah I, I attended it <laughs> I should know um but that's one of the things that always stands out too from your events is that you have a diverse bunch of speakers. Yeah, whether we, were, it be we were a couple as well, weren't we? We were. We were. That yeah. I don't know why you let us on, but there you go. <laughs> I just think it's really important that we represent everybody um, as much as possible. Because like I said, you know, digital isn't going anywhere, right? This skills gap, especially in the UK, is massive. Um, so businesses, p- businesses are starting still without the skills they need in order to thrive. I mean, um, because of the 2020, uh, obviously f- things have happened that have, uh, sped that up a little bit. So, which is great, I think. Um, but yeah, there's a massive skills gap and, uh, I think girls growing up need to be able to see that they're represented as well um, and that they can go into these techie careers and that kind of thing and it's not just or they can start what they can run businesses where they're using digital every day and that kind of thing rather than um you know thinking otherwise i just think it's important but i mean it's incredibly tough uh, if you want to talk more about the community side of things i just you know it's not all it's not all like a you know bed of roses grows quickly and all of these different things it's really very difficult and um just from some of the community leaders that i know um i can tell you some spend four or five hours a day on their communities and they don't get paid for it and they don't get any funding for their communities um which is really really which is really great because they're doing it obviously because they love the community and they want to make sure you know everybody's happy inside the community and they're representing their community and that kind of thing but they're not getting paid for it they do it out of pure passion because they want everybody to feel like they're in this safe space um so that's why that's part of the reason why like this year actually a few months ago in april um we launched a digital women membership as well because i'm doing all of this stuff for free and in my i'm getting now my staff from avisto media and stuff saying Mm. um you know can you help me out can you do some of this and uh my partner's like do you know what? You can't keep pulling people in from the business in digital women if it's you're not getting any money in from the business because it's taking money away from our business. So I'm like, but I, you know, I've got this goal. I really want to help all of these people and that kind of thing. But I don't want to take money from people and say I'm closing this down because this is one tactic people use. They close their group down so that people pay to do something, and then you yeah. take that space away from them. And I just don't ever want to do that. That's not something that I'm about. And so I thought. Um, do you know what like we've got all of this great content um, we can support people and why don't we launch a membership that people pay for and I thought you know maybe we'll get a few people join but it's good because if we get some money in it helps to support the community so I can spend more of my time on this and less of my time on agents agency side of stuff and that kind of thing Um, and actually because the because people are so behind it we managed I think like more or less 400 just over 400 members paid really quick quite quickly Mm. so um so that's so I don't call it I so I call that funding the community so then when we start getting money in we can spend more time on the community which means more people have been joining and we're able to do more free training as well as more you know community-based training and paid community-based training as well Mm. so yeah, I think what makes you quite unique as well is the CPD training. Um, that's not something I've come across previously um, over the last seven years. 
um, which I, I would normally associate CPD with like life insurance or finance or something. But, you know, it's quite a novel treat to get CPD training um, in, in social skills. You know? Well, the thing, the thing is, if you're, um, so say you want to get, um, you're working in digital already and um, you have certain personal development goals or you work in marketing, you have certain um, personal development goals. Um, if you do take CPD training, then you can show, you know, I've done this, I've been doing this training and I've actually got certified for doing this training, that kind of thing. So it looks really good when you go oh. into a lawyer and saying you're, comp- you're continually learning. Um, so I thought, and even if you run a business, you know, to show people, you know, I'm, or if you if you run a business or even if you um, coach people, you just say, look, I'm always learning. I'm learning these new things all the time and uh, it's get, I'm getting certified for it. So I thought, you know, it's not great for everybody. Not everybody's going to need this, you know, yeah. but for the people who are working in digital, for those people um, or in marketing or whatever, this is actually really good. Or even if people run like a, um, so if you're an osteopath, for example, you have to get a a certain amount of um, continual personal development a year points. So if you run, if you're an osteopath and you run your own business, for example, it's great to get these kind of points from different areas, um, Mm. including like digital skills. Do they they count as well? Yeah, they count. Yeah. So, um, yeah if, so like for example if you're doing your if you're if you have certain um if you're part of certain things like institute of digital marketing and these different things um you have to get a certain amount of points every year um to show that you're continually developing as a marketer or you're continually so it's a great thing to have and um we make sure our events the cpd like social day and that kind of thing as well because if you're yeah it's not for everybody but i think it's just a it's a great way to say actually i've taken this training it's structured as well because you can just do any old training online um, but the training that um i get cpd um certified has been through an assessor to look at it and go actually you know this is good this training's good it's got great learning outcomes and that kind of thing so you know we'll make sure that it is certified okay so yeah. do, do you have some top tips because remember we're helping people here try yeah. and build their own communities you know it's, it's a big goal for any business at any time of year yeah. um, but that's you know building awareness building consideration building conversion yeah. so how would you do it Right. Okay. So the first thing I would like to tell um, the Monday marketing podcast, the Monday morning Morning marketing. Yeah. Got it. (laughs) Fans is that a community and an audience are different things. Okay. That's the number one thing that you need to know because um, an audience are people who kind of follow you and they, they look at you and they're following you and they want to see stuff that you're doing. Okay. A community is where, they're not following you. They're part of your, the part of a community together around an interest that everybody can get behind, that they're all in it together. So it's not about you. It's not about your business. It's about the community. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the number one thing that you need to work out. Like, are you building a community because you want people to follow you and buy stuff from you? If that's the case, you're probably not building a community. You're building an audience. Okay. Whereas if you want people to come together around a common cause and feel like they're part of this amazing thing, like digital women, that's the community, right? The second thing is to just understand the why of your community. Why are you doing it? What is the mission for it? Because a community, building community isn't right for every single business because it takes a lot of time and effort and you have to really be in it for the long run it's not something you just close down tomorrow because that was if i close down digital women tomorrow said sorry i can't do this anymore that's going to seriously ruin my credibility Uh (laughs) long term thing um it's something you have to really think long term about what how are you going to keep this community engaged what are you going to do after after five years like what's your strategy for this community it's really important to think of it like that um, and then also, uh, aside from that mission as well, I think it's really important that you set some values um, for your community. So we have a set of values for our community, just saying, you know, who we are and what we expect of people and that kind of thing. If you're creating a community on Facebook, it's amazing. They have so many tools available. It's absolutely free. Um, and there's some great things that you can do to make sure you're not getting all the weirdos in your community. <laughs> <laughs> 
know, you get the occasional like odd person that slips through the net. Like uh, us. Not commenting on everything um, with their like weird telegram spam. Uh, and you have to, luckily, there's some great tools within Facebook. So you can just press a button and it deletes them and all their comments. So if they go on a massive spree, like commenting on everything in the middle of the night, you wake up in the morning, you've got 10 messages. Somebody's spamming in the community and you have to go and take it all down. So use fully utilize the tools if you're creating a facebook group just really see what's available great things like um, mentorship um you know just have a look figure it out go on facebook blueprint as well and facebook.com slash communities i think because there's so much information about people who have built these amazing communities a lot of them are my friends as well <laughs> so definitely go on there um, and also, I think the other thing is um, set some rules and some boundaries for your community, what is expected of your community, so that if they do share something spammy in there, you can just um, click a little button and it sends them a message to say, you've broken the rules, don't do this again, basically, otherwise you're gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people st- then st- stop doing it, or they can leave, you know, if they don't want, <laughs> you know, if they don't want to be part of that, they can just go, can't they? Because we... we- build something that's great for everybody not just for the few you make it you look like a swan yeah gliding across a lake and your feet are obviously going nuts underneath <laughs> not what goes into building community. it's not it's not just that as well um it's just making sure that at first people so in digital women people post a lot of stuff and they comment and they talk to each other but at first it's really hard because it doesn't start like that yeah. it starts like you're having to always post in there getting the conversation going and then if someone comments in there how do you do this a lot of the time I know the answer but I would never answer all the questions because no. I know there's a thousand other women in there that know the answer to this question so I try and tag the people who I know that are going to know the answer as well um, also I bring I brought other people to admin the community as well so people who are really active in the community I've made them admins because they like to do it hmm. um, you know be part of it and also because I know I can trust them because they are always commenting and answering questions and doing stuff anyway so I think it's really important as your community grows you bring trusted people in to become your moderators and admins as well so you're not having to do it all yourself well they're invested in the community already aren't they because it's a community and it's for them as much as it is for me and everyone else it's it's not for me it's for the community so yeah that's I think that's really important and yeah and uh, just at the minute your your group is only in English but that doesn't mean that you exclude people who speak other languages right no anybody can join the community and people who speak other languages something I've thought about actually long and hard because um i don't sp- speak any other languages so it's how would we i have thought about this because there, we do have people uh, quite a few people from europe joining and um i would love to create like a spanish speaking or italian speaking digital women community like offshoots does that make sense yeah like digital women espanol yeah exactly exactly <laughs> And, um, and then, you know, they can have their own meetups and that kind of thing would be facilitated by a Spanish speaker. Oh my gosh, Esther. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> when, when we can travel again, we'll be over in Spain quite a lot yes. for events and stuff. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> but yeah, I would like make it more global because at the moment it's very UK focused we have a few people we've got people all over the world we actually have a lot of people from India in the community funnily enough um which is really interesting I think it's like the third so it's like English Irish I- I- Indian and uh American and then European more European wow I didn't realize yeah um and, and the other thing I used to do I haven't done for a while is share the um insights of the community people can see where everyone's from and how much we're growing and that kind of thing that would be cool yeah. to see it again yeah that would be very cool in this week if i get a little bit of time but yeah yeah, yeah we, we don't <laughs> okay, expect to find no. time this week <laughs> no no, no yeah. we're just stressing her uh you have we have taken up enough of your time lucy it has been wonderful to talk to you today and thank you so much for joining us and thank you for creating your community and for allowing us to be part of it as well if you would like to find out more about the community, you can find it on Facebook. We, we will add the links below this podcast. 
and you can join the open group for free and then we highly recommend becoming members as well thank you very much everyone i hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you all next week bye